In a quiet corner of northeast Wales, the beautiful game has been sprinkled with just a little Hollywood magic. We love the idea of telling the story of a working class town, of a working class club, because we feel like everybody around the world can identify with that. In February 2021, non-league site Wrexham Association Football Club was bought by the actors Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Two and a half years later, in a story straight from the silver screen, they made it to the fourth round of the FA Cup and secured promotion to League Two, to the absolute delight of fans. 15 years, we've finally done it. I can't believe it. But what Rob and Ryan have done for us is just unbelievable. Do you know what? It's not just about the football club, it's the community. They've pulled the whole area together. Attendance at their games has soared to 10,000, and the small site now has some very big supporters, many of them overseas, thanks in part to the documentary Welcome to Wrexham, which the actors have been filming, following the club's rise since the takeover. But as with cinematic epics, for every high, there must be lows. And despite Wrexham's success, the club has lost millions in its pursuit. Already some are asking, what happens when Reynolds and McElhenney move on to projects new? Eventually the documentary will end, and we have to make sure that what we've built here is a story that will continue. I'm Neil Patterson, and this is the Sky News Daily. Mark Griffiths is a fan and Wrexham Club commentator for the last 20 years. He also provides the voiceover for the documentary series. The fact is, anything can happen at Wrexham at the moment, and it's it's mad, but it's wonderful. We will be hearing a lot more from Mark in just a moment, but first I'm joined by Rob Harris, Sky's sports correspondent. Uh, so Rob, look, it is a fascinating story, clearly, uh, but for those of us who aren't as football daft as you, just explain exactly what's been going on at Wrexham in the last few years. Well, the takeover happened in 2021, and at the time it looked like this injection of Hollywood glamour into a mostly unglamorous place. <laughs> I like Wrexham. Don't be so critical. And, you know, we got word then there was potentially going to be a documentary accompanying this, so it looked like actually some canny business. You're buying into a football club and effectively you're buying a cast and not just the cast of the team itself, but the entire city as well, as Wrexham did become a city in the last couple of years. Of course. And the way that they've used that project is actually probably been elevated beyond anything we could have imagined. Put, put it into context, I mean, how much of a success, how much of a turnaround has this been for the club? Well, they have had times when their own future is in jeopardy. Wrexham were down in the lower leagues and they have been trying to rise back into the football league, into those four professional leagues. This is a takeover that has given them that dream, that ability to get out of the National League because it's pretty tough. There's only one promotion place automatically from the National League into League Two. By comparison, there are three promotion places available from the Championship into the Premier League. So the way they've actually had to do it is pretty challenging. They didn't get there in the first season, but they have spent their way to gain promotion. That was going to be my question. I mean, to, to what extent can we attribute the success directly to the very significant, we'll go through the figures in a little while, but the very significant injection of cash that these two Hollywood stars have produced? Well, you don't need as much cash, say, at the top end of the game to actually make that small bit of difference. So Paul Mullen, the striker who scored 27 goals in the National League this season, he's on reputedly more than £4,000 a week. By comparison, it said actually the weekly average is below 1000 a week in the National League. So they are spending a lot more than their rivals to achieve this. So it can't just be spending on players. I mean, I know, for example, that they've bought a stadium, but presumably the changes on the pitch are reflected by changes in the back room as well. Yeah, exactly. The fact the way they've actually managed to get a sort of group of players together, the fact they've got Phil Parkinson, a manager who's previously managed higher up in the game, he was attracted to this project too. And then it all comes together. A lot of things around football are about the vibe around a club. If you've got a bad atmosphere, if you've got sort of an unsettled sense of things, then teams can quickly go into a downward, downward spiral, as we do see. So it all comes together. The fact you've got a community behind the team, you've got a team with its purpose, you're in the global spotlight as well. It's all going to help sort of galvanise them. And that vibe, as you say, can, can maybe in part be attributed to the new owners themselves, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. I mean, there is something almost quite romantic about these two, admittedly very rich and famous guys buying the club and seemingly investing not just their cash, but their time into it. 
I mean, they are figures people can relate to. Mm. And the fact they are individuals rather than a nation state, they're not a faceless corporation mm. or a private equity fund that can buy into sport. And maybe it harks back more to the, the way clubs were funded many years ago. Often yeah. it was the local businessman, the the local industrialist that was investing. And you knew the person. And, and some people will perhaps criticise them as being sort of flamboyant, trying to get the publicity, trying to be front and centre of things. But at the flip side, we talk about so often distant owners, distant foreign owners who don't engage with the fans. And these are owners who do go in the pub. Yes, in part, it's probably to get scenes for the documentary series, but they are there. They're front and centre. They're not just doing this from afar. They're not just in Hollywood. They are experiencing this community. They are helping to transform a, an area. And even just looking at the city, it's not somewhere that's overloaded with tourism, with hotels and things like that. So it is a way of actually sort of breathing new life into North Wales. And actually, if you do climb up the leagues as well, that there is that potential to sort of grow the area because you get a bigger influx of fans as well. Mark Griffiths is a lifelong fan of Wrexham. He's also the club commentator. It's his voice you hear doing the voiceover on Welcome to Wrexham. And he's the host of Final Whistle, the Wrexham AFC podcast, which I've just discovered uh, just so happens to be the longest running footy pod in the world. I feel somewhat intimidated now. <laughs> uh, Mark, look, first and foremost, congratulations. How did it feel when you secured promotion? Well, as a Wrexham fan, I'm a born pessimist. <laughs> and... I would say I realised we'd done it about 15 seconds before the end of added time, even though we were two goals to the good, when I saw the referee sidle towards the tunnel. And I thought, he's going to blow his whistle and run off before all the crowds get on. I think until that point, I just couldn't take anything for granted because it's just utter, utter insanity. Because in fact, (laughs) I had a bit of a strange moment when I was hugging Wrexham's captain on the pitch. And as I hugged him, I looked over his shoulder and I saw Rob McElhenney, arms outstretched and staring manically at me, wanting a hug. And I thought, oh, you know, I love this player. Do I really discard him? <laughs> in the end, I got a hug off both. But I don't think I've, it's quite sunk into me that they bought the club in the first place, if I'm honest. Never mind that this is happening. Well, what was the reaction in Wrexham, in, in and around the club, when the, the idea that you know, Hollywood actors, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, were, were coming to town and were serious about buying the club. Some people were delighted because they just wanted an outside investor. Other people, and I include myself in this, we have the memories of twice going close to going out of business this century, and we were very cautious. When basically Ryan's name leaked, and when it did, you, you did start to feel a bit more reassured, and I think a lot of people who were doubting started to, because... His social media profile is that of a, a right-minded, decent person who does <laughs> decent things. So that gave you a sense of reassurance. Rob, come, uh, when his name came out as well, you look at what he's stood for throughout his life and you think the last thing he's going to do is mess us around. So for some people, it was an immediate delight. For some people, it was a gradual process. But by the time of the vote, where was it? 96% of the members, if I remember correctly, voted to accept... I think it's fair to say we'd all pretty much arrive at the same end sheet. And I suppose now, given the results, given the promotion, uh, Ryan and Rob, if they are to pop into a pub anywhere in Wrexham, they probably don't have to put their hand in their pocket. Exactly right. Although, to be frank, usually if they are going to pop into a pub, they probably already put 500 quid behind the bar for everyone to have a <laughs> drink. Uh, that is the pattern. Uh, oh, I must emphasise this to you. This is all about community. It's It's not about Hollywood and... The people of Wrexham, whether they're football fans or not, A, acknowledge that they've genuinely had a transformative effect on the town. And they did state that that was their intention from the start because there is a remarkable upturn in, frankly, the self-confidence of the town. I'm a teacher. Honestly, three years ago, kids from Wrexham talking about Wrexham would have had a humorous, self-deprecating approach. It was all about, you know, the Gwenville River surging through what at least six inches wide you know (laughs) people were so negative about Wrexham and we were suffering as badly if not worse as the rest of the country in terms of the economic downturn and now oh I promise you everybody wants to tell people 
they're from Wrexham. Tell me a little bit more about this this idea that it's community that is at the heart of what what Rob and Ryan have been have been trying to do. Because of course, as well as buying the club, there has been this documentary series, Welcome to Wrexham, uh, happening in parallel with with the football. Well, I think actually, Welcome to Wrexham is, in some ways, the way to explain it. It's also massively crucial to their plan because they recognised that in a way which I'm struggling to think of an exact example where celebrity has been converted into currency quite like they've done this. So Welcome to Wrexham was a key part of that because they recognised they would have to find new fans and they knew that the American markets and the overseas markets drawn in by their celebrity would be a key part of it. But what I think a lot of people looking from the outside don't quite appreciate, we have amazing interaction with the international fans. They are wonderful. But they are drawn in by the community elements of the show, not the football. They all say the same thing. We fell in love with the people. We fell in love with the town. They they enjoyed seeing the genuineness of the people in the documentary. And then they fall in love with the football because they wish well towards those people. But the key thing is that then a group of them decided to make the Ask Wrexham community group. And their basic intention is they want to give back to Wrexham just for the happiness they get watching the show. And they raise funds which we help promote for local charities because they want to feel like part of the town, which is, I, I, I'm not, I don't feel I'm putting it in any exaggerated way to say that for me personally, it's a genuinely uplifting experience. It's a genuine life enhancing experience. I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm an evangelist, but it, it genuinely is remarkable. I'm I'm so happy to hear that, and so happy for you and 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 the other uh, residents of Wrexham. It, it it has been a roller coaster, and it's ended up in a fantastic place, and and it hasn't stopped yet. But, but I mean, I've, I've got to I'm going to have to ask. I mean, what are they like? They are so lovely. Um, I <laughs> I'm I'm the opposite to most people. Um, in that I had at the time of the takeover, I'd never seen a Ryan Reynolds film. I knew who he was. I knew he was massive. I'd never seen one, but I'm a big fan of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, as are my wife and my lad. So when we heard Rob's name, that was what blew our minds. <laughs> I've had quite a bit of contact with Rob, which is fantastic, obviously, a uh, fanboy that I am. Um, the, the, the most amusing one was I my, they used my commentary in the first season of Welcome to Wrexham. And so he said he'd phone me up. So I'm sitting in my front room. My wife knows that he's going to call. She's in a state of excitement. My phone goes off. It says unknown number, Beverly Hills, California. <laughs> I'm thinking I might know who this is. I pick her up. My wife... While I'm speaking, it was silently dancing around me. And so I, I, I said to him, well, I'm sad to be sorry, I can't concentrate. My wife's a big fan and she's going mad. And he said, hand, hand over the phone. And they just had a lovely 10-minute chat about cats. <laughs> and, and, you know, that, that, that's something that, and how he and his wife, who is also a big star as well, um, how they rescue cats. And it, it's just so lovely. So how long? Do you think that there will be? I, I, I suspect the connection between the two and the club will, will last the rest of their lives. But I wonder, in terms of the ownership, uh, how long that might continue. Um, I don't think anyone's really thinking about that right now. To be honest with you, obviously you have got to be realistic. But you know, both of them are very explicit that they're in this for the long haul. They they don't want to give us a quick boost and then walk away. I mean, they may decide at some point they could accept. It outside investments which would water down their, their stake, obviously. Uh, but that could be very bene beneficial for us if they find a rich person who wants to step in with them. But I, I, they really are. I mean, Rob said to me on the pitch when I said, just, I, just, I just said thank you to him. I mean, what else could I say, really? And he just said, oh, we wanted to start that. Beautiful game it may well be, but football is also a business. And Wrexham have lost millions, close to three in fact. On top of that, Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds have loaned the club close to four million themselves. Now they say there is no immediate pressure to repay these loans. But no one, not even a Hollywood star, can keep shelling out millions of pounds year after year without at some point either wanting a return on their investment or cutting their losses. So, Rob, what comes next? They are bringing new sponsors. So mm. that is one thing that has actually been a benefit of the series, of the 
global appeal. And if you look at their sort of social media posts, they get huge interactions, huge number of views beyond teams higher up the league. So there's an appeal for sponsors which will bring in cash and could ultimately bring in the interest of external investors to perhaps to dilute their own shareholdings. So maybe it'd be seen as a canny bit of business paying a couple of million for this team in the fifth tier, whereas in the Premier League, we talk about paying billions for the teams. And the beauty of the system is if you can climb up the leagues and you end up in the Premier League, you've got a big valuable asset on your hands. But they are losing money. And and on that basis, I, I do wonder, and I'm sorry, I, I suppose the people of Wrexham will be questioning this as well, just how long the commitment of these two Hollywood stars not from this part of the world might well last. So they won't want to see their future jeopardised by short-termism, by mm. the pair of them deciding, actually, we've had enough, we've achieved our success, or perhaps we do get into a situation where they're not climbing the ladder of the English game further. And if we look at another team, Salford City, a team that's being transformed, climbing up through the leagues, mm. not organically, but because of the injection of cash from former Manchester United players, Gary Neville, David yeah. Beckham, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, as well as a Singaporean investor, Peter Lim. That's the cash that took them through the uh, pyramid. It also led to investment in their stadium. But they've been in League Two now for four seasons. They're not finding it easy to gain the next step into League One. So it shows even with the investment that you are potentially prohibited in terms of the next step you can make. And I wonder, Rob, whether any of this would have happened if British football wasn't as popular as it is now in the United States. Like, you can be in any American city and there will be a bar open on a Saturday morning showing the game. Um, You've got Ted Lasso, of course, that that very funny Apple TV series about an American football coach coming to the UK to coach English football. I mean, Rob, I mean, are, are we likely to see more US investment in UK football? It has been transformational over the last decade, in part due to the growth of the Premier League on NBC, which shares the ownership of Sky News, of Comcast. And they do show a match typically once a week, free to air nationally on the main NBC channel. And that gets notable viewing figures. And it's seen an American audience become very closely associated with the Premier League, with soccer, not seeing as some foreign entity they need to explain to them but actually really engaging then you've seen Ted Lasso which started actually as a character in an NBC promotion for the Premier League and we've seen things like Champions League competition growing there on CBS with many of the familiar pundits we know from the UK and it's becoming part of the conversation probably more so even maybe than their own domestic major league soccer the fact is there is this growing interest in the Premier League, which has seen ownership come from the States as well. Chelsea's ownership, the latest American owners into the Premier League. So we are seeing how soccer has just grown in the States. So everyone might want a piece of the action. Tell me, what on earth is going to happen to this club next year? I mean, do you think they're going to survive? It's sink or swim time, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose one thing is about not only sustaining a competitive challenge on the pitch, but sustaining interest in the series. How many Mm. series uh, can it run for, you know, if they do sort of stagnate and drift around League Two? Will people want to keep watching? Does the value of that series then uh, diminish? So it's not only a football project, but it's also a Truman-style project with everyone sort of with the cameras looking in as well. So you need to sort of keep the the storylines going as well. So how much do they invest in League Two? They are coming up against sort of financial regulations as well in those uh, competitions. So League Two is difficult. But one thing is, they can attract players. We saw with Ben Foster, the goalkeeper, being signed by them for the closing stage of the season, former Manchester United, former England international, choosing to effectively come out of retirement. Well, there might be other players who think, worth me joining Wrexham because I'll get quite a global standing as well in the series and you can boost your own marketability, your own sort of post-playing prospects, particularly if you're at the tail end of your career. And even just in the last few days, we've been seeing Gareth Bale being perhaps uh, uh, courted by the owners on Twitter. Maybe it's just sort of teasing, but there's the potential of players like that at the tail end or have decided to step away from playing thinking oh maybe I'll come back for a bit if they want to boost their profile although Gareth Bell is not one of those players who's mm. ever sort of sought that sort of fame and celebrity side of the game uh, do you know what I think I might have found my second club Rob thanks very much indeed
Oh, well, look, let's uh, round off the podcast with superfan Mark Griffiths. Mark, I want you to pop your Wrexham commentator hat on just for a second. I- imagine it is the end of the 2023-24 season and Wrexham are going up to League One thanks to a goal uh, from new signing Gareth Bale. <laughs> what would the commentary be like at that point? I I think it would, if I'm honest, just be a hybrid squeal <laughs> and then I'd collapse <laughs> and what a way to go, you know? Oh, go on, come on, give it a go. Well, then... Pulls it back. Ronaldinho with the dummy. Bale, he says this. Goal! Rex McDonald! it! we won! Here we come! Unbelievable! My thanks to Mark Griffiths, Rob Harris, and of course to you for listening to the Sky News Daily with me, Neil Patterson. This episode was produced by Rosie Gillett with Alex Eden. Our editor is Philly Bowman.